the situation in the Middle East is once again heating up. Israel is back in the spotlight after launching a massive attack on the port of Hodaida in Yemen. As a result of this attack, Israel faced retaliation that led to the destruction of several infrastructures, caused casualties, and endangered the safety of other civilians. The assault on Hodaida not only adds to the long list of conflicts in the region, but also has the potential to trigger unpredictable reprisals from armed groups in Yemen. However, behind this attack, a significant question arises. Is this decision by Israel a strategic move, or is it a major blunder in Middle Eastern geopolitics? There have been countless warnings about the escalation following Israel's attacks on Yemen. Recently, on July 20th, Hezbollah launched another airstrike targeting a community in northern Israel. According to information from the Times of Israel, this rocket attack sparked fires and damaged a school. This act was a retaliatory move after Israel attacked Yemen. The school, located in Kibbutz Dafna, is largely used as an evacuation area for civilians. Approximately 50 dunams of land burned in the Banias Nature Reserve, due to the rocket attack. Hezbollah's assault occurred just hours after Israel bombed Yemen in retaliation for an attack on Tel Aviv. Hezbollah and the Ansar Allah group, known to be allies and part of Iran's comrades in arms, are involved in this conflict. Simultaneously, a Hezbollah cell was discovered in Haula, southern Lebanon, after being hit by a drone strike. Indeed, Israel and Hezbollah have been engaging in cross-border clashes since October, when Hamas launched an attack on Israel as part of its association with Palestine. Hezbollah stated that these actions are solely to support the Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip, who have been devastated by aggressive attacks. Hundreds of people on both sides of the Israel-Lebanon border have been killed in clashes since October. Not only were schools targeted in the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hezbollah, but Israel also bombarded the port of Hodaida in Yemen. Just a day later, the Houthis, supported by Iran, retaliated by firing ballistic missiles at Israel. However, these missiles were intercepted and shot down by Israel's Aero 3 defense system. The Israeli Defense Forces, IDF, confirmed this news stating that the missiles were intercepted outside Israeli airspace. The IDF described their attack on Hodaida as an extended hand operation, specifically targeting fuel depots, oil refineries, power plants, and other facilities within the port. During the incident, a large fire engulfed the surrounding area, and smoke was seen billowing high from the port. This Israeli assault was a response to a deadly drone attack in Tel Aviv that occurred early on the morning of Friday, July 19. The Yemeni government strongly condemned Israel, warning against actions that could turn Yemen into a battlefield and vowing to overthrow Israeli influence in the region. In Eilat, located in southern Israel, warning sirens were heard due to the threat of an impending attack. This was the first assault launched by the Houthis since Israel's massive offensive in Yemen. Reports indicated that this attack resulted in three deaths and 87 injuries. The Yemeni military, under spokesman Yahya Sari, announced that Yemen carried out sea and air strikes in the Gulf of Aden, targeting the ship Lobivia. These attacks were a punishment for Israel's violations involving ships entering the port. Sari emphasized Yemen's commitment to avenging Israel's actions in Gaza and called for support from Arab and Islamic countries. With the support of the Houthis, this group severely damaged the cargo ship Lobivia in the Gulf of Aden. The ship, which was flying the Singaporean flag, was forced to turn back after being hit by two ballistic missiles. This attack marked a significant escalation in Houthi actions against global shipping amidst Israel's war in Gaza. According to reports, the ship was transiting northeast along the Gulf of Aden and was about 83 nautical miles southeast of Yemen's Port Aden at the time of the attack. 
The ship quickly moved away and turned off its automatic identification system about an hour later. The missile strike on the cargo ship was part of a series of long-range drone attacks in Tel Aviv. Just three days earlier, on July 16th, the Houthis attacked the Liberian-flagged oil tanker, Kios Leon. The tanker was forced to turn back to avoid further damage and investigate potential oil spills after being targeted by the Houthis in the Red Sea. This oil spill caused damage to the port side, with traces of what appeared to be fuel. In recent weeks, the Houthis have emerged as unexpected allies for Palestine, causing significant retaliatory damage to Israel. In June, the Houthis used long-range boats filled with explosives and missiles to attack the Greek-owned coal carrier Tudor. As a result, the ship sank, marking the second vessel lost in the Houthi campaign. Reports indicate that since November, the Houthis have killed four sailors and seized one of their ships. The Houthi militants have repeatedly carried out drone attacks in Tel Aviv, Israel. Boldly, they launched an attack on July 19th at 3 a.m. local time. The drone struck a building near the American Embassy. Following this drone attack, Houthi militants declared that Tel Aviv is no longer safe and will become a new target for the group. The Houthis take great pride in their drone, named Yaffa, which they claim is undetectable by radar. However, a witness stated that the unmanned aircraft flew for hours before finally exploding in Tel Aviv. This statement was confirmed by Houthi spokesperson Yahya Sari, who asserted that Yaffa could bypass interceptor systems and remain invisible to radar. At the scene of the incident, panic and chaos intensified as the drone devastated nearby buildings. Following the explosion, security was significantly tightened around the city. An American official noted that no U.S. citizens were injured and there was no reported damage to the American embassy. In response to the incident, Israeli opposition leader Yair Lapid criticized Netanyahu's government, claiming it had lost its ability to ensure the safety of Israeli citizens. Earlier, Israel's military radio suggested a possible mishap in the Yaffa drone attack. According to Israeli sources, the unmanned aircraft was detected, but neither shot down nor classified as a threat. Furthermore, the drone attack caught the Israeli Defense Forces off guard as no air raid sirens were activated. As a precaution, Israeli forces are also investigating how the drone managed to evade their air defenses. The IDF stated that the sudden attack was executed using a long-range assault drone and marked the first major strike on Tel Aviv since the Hamas attack on October 7. In a bid to counter Houthi aggression, Israel's allies, the United States and the United Kingdom, launched three airstrikes on Al Lahia International Airport in Yemen. This marked the second time U.S.-led forces targeted Yemeni civilian infrastructure. The U.S. and U.K. conducted airstrikes in the media district of Haja Governorate and also struck the Al Buhaizi area in Al Hudaida Governorate. U.S. Central Command reported that American military forces had destroyed two Houthi unmanned aerial vehicles and one unmanned surface vehicle in the Red Sea. Additionally, these American and British strikes occurred amidst new assaults in the Red Sea and warnings from the Houthis to attack Saudi Arabia. The leader of the Ansar Allah movement, Abdul Malik Al Houthi, openly warned Saudi Arabia against collaborating with Western countries in Israel. Al Houthi threatened cross-border attacks, saying, airport to airport, port to port. The Houthis have long targeted ships connecting to Israel since mid-November. The UK and the US began their airstrikes in Yemen in January to stop attacks on vessels passing through the Red Sea and surrounding gulfs. However, many of the US-led airstrikes have failed to hit their intended Houthi or Yemeni targets.